Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to this uh, 17th lecture of this particular series on surface engineering. Um, uh, I hope by now you are familiar with the concept that by surface engineering what we mean is uh, the modification or tailoring of the microstructure and composition or either of them onto the near surface region only leaving the bulk unaffected. So, as I said, uh, there are two approaches. Uh, we can either change the microstructure or we can change the composition or both. Now, uh, there are very many processes available. Whenever you actually approach a particular subject matter, uh, the first and foremost uh, uh, way of looking at it would be to understand what is the overall scope of the subject. So, this particular view graph tells you exactly what is in it for the entire course. As this is one snapshot which summarizes the entire scope of the work. And as you can see that uh, there are three approaches, three possibilities. Uh, one is when we are modifying the surface, uh, meaning the modification of the surface composition or the microstructure, but without any change in the overall dimension of the specimen. For example, the thickness remains what it is and essentially we use either thermal or mechanical activation to change uh, certain parts of the composition and microstructure of the surface alone. So, this is one possibility where we are uh, basically uh, changing only the uh, surface microstructure or composition without any major change in dimension. The next possibility is that where we actually remove some part of the surface uh, typically in an approach to clean or polish. Uh, and in the process we actually uh, bring in certain changes in the uh, surface chemistry or the microstructure. Uh, we can also do another possibility which is very widely practiced is uh, based on uh, deposition or coating where we actually add on to the existing dimension of the surface. So, in A we do not change the macroscopic dimension of the surface for example, thickness remains what it is. In B, the thickness reduces when we remove certain parts from the surface and in C, when we add on and we certainly increase the thickness or certain dimension of the, sub of the surface. In all these cases, overall uh, we actually would be covering 15 different approaches. I would not say very specific techniques because these are generic even when I say that I am going to change the or modify the surface microstructure using thermal activation or uh, similarly microstructural changes by mechanical activation alone, then under this 1 and 2 there are quite a number of techniques or processes possible. And in fact, we will be covering uh, more or less all of them, but as I said our approach is scientific so that uh, we first understand the generic principle behind this approach and then uh, certain modifications of one approach to another brings you to uh, from one technique to another. Um, so, we are not going into random uh, description of the various techniques possible. We first would like to classify them scientifically. And uh, uh, in, in, in this approach for example, under A we have possibilities of thermal or mechanical activation for change in microstructure and similarly compositional changes are possible by using uh, diffusion or high energy processes, even uh, chemical reaction uh, for a very thin layer. Likewise, there are very many possibilities. So, we will go one by one uh, uh, systematically. So, first we are talking about uh, approach A, where we are changing only the uh, surface microstructure and composition without any major change in dimension of the surface. Uh, first, when we talk of change of microstructure, as I said already, we can do it either by thermal activation or by mechanical activation. So, what does it mean? For example, when you are changing the microstructure alone, 
and not changing the composition by thermal activation, essentially you are exposing the uh, your specimen or the sample to uh, elevated temperature and uh, diffusion may take place, certain phase transformations may take place and in the process the surface actually uh, acquires a slightly different microstructure. And this could be substantial or this could be marginal. For example, when you expose a semiconductor uh, material for annealing or a metallic system for stress relief, you essentially are only changing the state of stress and in some cases also uh, distribution of the domains or the atomic arrangements onto the surface. Similarly, the semiconductor materials are often sub, uh, exposed to rapid thermal annealing where only a certain depth from the surface. So, you actually apply a flash of light which could be a laser light or a thermal um, flash because of which the surface gets uh, activated thermally up to a very thin uh, distance from the surface uh, towards the core and only a few atomic layers on the surface undergoes thermally activated diffusion and atomic migration because of which uh, uh, certain stress relief uh, uh, operations uh, take place or certain reorganization of atoms in small length scale. Uh, in case of steel, a very uh, routine and a very uh, standard technique is to harden the surface by way of just heating it either by flame or by induction, um, indu electromagnetic induction or even using an electromagnetic wave called laser. So, that the surface from this uh, from the tip from the top of the surface uh, unto a small depth from the surface gets heated up. So, within a very short time you actually apply a pulse heating and because of which the surface gets heated up. Now, while uh, heat trans transports from surface to the core within a very short distance the uh, temperature comes to a very low level. So, as a result the bulk of the material remains at room temperature only the surface gets heated up and because of this heating and cooling cycle the microstructure undergoes certain change and in these three cases in particular surface hardening, induction hardening and laser hardening, the, uh, the room temperature microstructure which is ferrite perlite uh, combination uh, reaches austenite stage and then subsequently austenite is uh, quenched by self quenching uh, to room temperature and in the process we uh, see transformation of austenite into martensite and as a result the surface gets hardened. So, this is a standard technique for uh, hardening the steel surfaces. On the other hand, when you talk of changing uh, similar microstructural uh, modification of the surface only by mechanical activation without changing the composition. So, you can do uh, essentially when you imagine uh, any piece of metal and uh, when you uh, heat, uh, heat not thermally heat when you actually impact or hit with a hammer or for that matter uh, some other uh, techniques uh, then you actually I am sorry about this uh, spelling mistake here it should have been peening, short peening. So, um, so this uh, when you hit with uh, either a hammer or uh, with uh, ultra fine uh, spherical objects at very high velocity the impact actually changes the uh, uh, surface uh, and introduces certain density of dislocation. Uh, so, this could be uh, purely because of mechanical activation. Similarly, you can also create a certain shock wave onto the surface by way of laser peening. So, essentially you confine uh, the surface with some coating and then when you apply the laser suddenly the uh, coating material expands uh, at a very high rate and in the process creates certain compressive stress onto the surface. You can also do skin pass rolling where the deformation degree of deformation from the surface is very limited unto a very small depth from the surface or you simply can beat the surface with a hammer and then create a small deformation layer. In all these five processes the essence of the uh, microstructural change is related to uh, increasing the dislocation density onto the surface and as a result of which you actually end up creating residual compressive stress onto the surface which actually is beneficial for improving the fatigue strength or for that matter any situation wherever one anticipates certain um, crack growth or crack propagation uh, 
So, the crack propagation will be uh, reduced and in some cases even prevented when the degree of residual stress onto the surface is fairly large. So, in under approach A uh, using the techniques uh, under 1 and 2, we are only changing the microstructure and not the composition. On the other hand, we actually can also now move on to another possibility where we do not change the dimension of the surface, but we change the composition and that can be thermally act through thermally activated process through high energy processes or uh, taking recourse to some chemical reaction which is confined only to the surface region. For example, you can coat a material with uh, elements like aluminum, silicon and chromium. Uh, these are particularly useful for both ferrous and non-ferrous substrates. The advantage is that these elements actually create an, a solute rich layer onto the surface which when exposed to high temperature uh, preferentially creates oxides of these elements which are very not only very stable and having very high melting temperature, but also are quite adherent to the substrate. As a result, you create a thermal protection system onto the underlying substrate. So, this is possible with let us say these kind of non-ferrous elements. Similar protection is also possible on metallic systems by way of uh, introducing uh, the interstitial elements like carbon, boron or nitrogen, which in turn can create their compounds. So, interstitial compounds which are extremely hard and uh, wear resistant. So, this is how you can actually create a, a, a boride layer or a, a carbide or a nitride layer onto the surface to protect from any amount of mechanically activated uh, degradation of the surface. We also can uh, apply thermal activation for uh, controlled grain orientation or even microbial growth onto the surface. So, that the surface composition again a uh, very uh, thin region undergoes certain change in composition and as a result there could be a uh, certain amount of protection or uh, some other um, uh, activities or um, properties are enhanced. We can also do a pack cementation which is very similar to diffusion coating. Essentially this is a completely a solid state process. So, wherein you actually pack the component inside a box and then expose the box or subject the box to a high temperature. Uh, so, that the diffusion takes place, but this here the diffusion uh, pack contains not just the diffusant, but also certain activators and uh, catalysts and so on. Um, the other approach wherein we are changing the composition of the near surface region without changing the dimension could be for example, using um, the high energy uh, ion beam, which can be either imp implanted or mixed intermixed. Now, here essentially you, you are now sh instead of like in case of uh, short pinning or ultra ultrasound pinning, you actually in short pinning in particular, you are throwing uh, small spherical objects at very high velocity and in the process creating uh, residual compressive stress by in in increasing the dislocation density onto the surface. In case of ion beam uh, implantation, you actually are shooting uh, atoms you actually are energizing accelerating the atoms and uh, from the gun when you shoot these atoms they find their way they make their way into the uh, surface uh, up to a certain depth. And actually what happens in the process is somewhat similar to the uh, cascading effect we see on a carom board or a billiard board when one object hits uh, one of the uh, uh, frontal coins uh, then in turn that coin hits uh, another and another and so on. So, you actually see a chain reaction or a cascading reaction and in the process the ions which are implanted onto the surface reaches up to a certain depth uh, below the surface and uh, over a period of time uh, the overall composition of the near surface region which could be just a few atomic layers from the surface gets modified. Uh, we can do a similar implantation uh, in a plasma environment and this is typically called a plasma immersion um, uh, implantation processes and uh, these, these are certain characteristics which are uh, fairly beneficial for non line of sight implantation. I must clarify that when you talk of ion beam implantation, you essentially modify exactly the point that you are seeing. So, it is called line of sight process whereas, in plasma immersion processes it, it need not be uh, exactly the uh, uh, line of sight process. Uh, 
Finally, we can also change the surface uh, composition by very thin uh, chemical reaction layer created at room temperature by way of certain very specific uh, chemical reagents. So, so, this is what we have just discussed the modification of surface diamond surface without changing the dimension. The next would be when we are ready to remove a part of the surface and uh, this essentially is a process where um, which can be again uh, through mechanical activation or mechanical means by removal by electrochemical means or removal simply by chemical attack. So, in these three approaches uh, you are talking about um, um, so, this approach based on removal of material from the surface, one can uh, divide the mechanically activated processes into two parts which are manual or machine driven. So, for example, uh, we would have seen the artisans uh, who create excellent uh, or aesthetically very uh, nice looking brass wares or stone wares or uh, various kinds of metallic uh, objects, uh, maybe a statue or and so on and so forth. We would have seen them uh, bringing up an excellent luster onto the surface by way of very controlled polishing and even buffing and so on. So, these are manual processes. Similarly, the, uh, the stone statues, the artisans who work with uh, stone or such very hard and brittle objects, they are uh, known to chisel. Uh, certain portions from the surface and in the process they bring in the right kind of a contour they want or even the exact uh, luster or s uh, size and uh, dimensions and so on. So, these are manually driven processes. Uh, we um, uh, can also do a similar thing of removal of material by way of grinding or polishing or buffing. These are all machine driven processes. And we can also actually remove very controlled amount by uh, exactly using a lathe or machining or turning uh, or drilling and so on. So, so these are also uh, processes which allows you to uh, do surface um, engineering by way of removal of material from the surface. And uh, I, by now I hope you understand that uh, when we talk of surface engineering, uh, we actually are talking about all kinds of all possible kinds of engineering materials which can be um, uh, simply a metal piece or, uh, or a semiconductor chip or it can be a, a, a polymeric uh, object, it can be a ceramic product, it can be a refractory, it can be a tool, it can be even a stone or it can be a brassware or a cast metal or, or any of these. So, whichever, whichever solid has engineering uh, uh, objective or is used for engineering purpose or engineering utility, uh, if we are uh, taking care of their life, their design, their uh, aesthetics or their protection or their um, uh, reliability or safety issues by way of changing the surface microstructure and composition, we certainly call it surface engineering. Now, uh, removal based surface engineering methods can also employ electrochemical means. So, for example, uh, it can be uh, uh, simply electrochemical polishing or removal from the surface um, electro polishing, either it can be continuous or it can be through pulsed mode. We can do electro discharge mach machining, similarly we can do plasma cleaning and etching, we can do focused ion beam etching. And, and so on and so forth. So, for example, this is very, very uh, precise, but is confined to a very small region. In fact, we are talking about uh, less than, certainly less than micrometer. So, we are talking about anything between 10 nanometer to about 100 or few hundred nanometers. So, something can be as small and as precise as ion beam etching or on the other hand, something could be as large and wide like electro polishing uh, where, where we actually are removing from a fairly large surface area. But for talking about surface area or typical industri industrial practices, we actually can also go in certain kinds of hot dipping processes. Say for example, um, when we are now when we move into the chemical processes where uh, in case of electrochemical processes, we need electrolyte, we need two electrodes, uh, anode and cathode, and we certainly expect uh, ionic transport within the cell uh, 
and electronic transport outside the cell. So essentially we have a complete galvanic cell there. But in case of chemical methods, we do not necessarily employ uh, a situation where uh, transport takes, transport involves a movement of electrons and ions. But certainly there are dissolution uh, by way of uh, uh, some chemical which attacks control, uh, actually employs control attack onto the surface. So, we can do dip cleaning or degreasing. I mean, this is very common in mechanical devices, particularly automobiles or any moving parts. Uh, we can do chemical polishing or dissolution, which uh, removes, for example, certain oxides or certain undesirable substances from the surface. And we also can do etching, which is very controlled and selective, uh, can be both uniform etching. Uh, where we actually remove from the entire surface area or we can remove selective uh, removal. We can employ selective removal by, your, by way of etching when uh, certain constituents onto the surface uh, uh, they are attacked and not the rest. So, this is how we actually can do surface engineering by way of remo removing materials from the surface. Uh, we can also uh, now uh, think of another possibility which is uh, in my opinion, one of the large, one of the most widely employed approaches is when we add on materials to the surface. So, we, when we coat or deposit and that we can do through one of these three possible approaches by way of uh, chemical deposition, uh, physical deposition or electrochemical deposition. The, there is hardly any uh, precise uh, distinction between these two terms, but the generally accepted convention is uh, to uh, mention uh, or invoke deposition when the deposit layer is fairly thin and by way of thin uh, again the convention says it should be less than a millimeter. Whereas, uh, when you are talking about uh, coating you, you actually are uh, referring to situations where you can build up materials uh, not only a millimeter, but actually um, several millimeters. But then this is a distinction which is uh, very loose and not very precise. Uh, I must also mention here that when we talk of these uh, coatings or deposition processes, this actually though it is surface engineering, but this actually is the precursor of now which is a fairly exciting possibility in manufacturing engineering called additive manufacturing, where we build in layer by layer and eventually create a complete component. So, there this uh, the additive manufacturing process is essentially based on uh, the foundation is laid by uh, the science behind uh, uh, addition uh, assisted surface engineering. Anyway, so when we talk of uh, uh, deposition or coating uh, through chemical means, we can do it through molten bath, we can do it through entirely through solid state or we can employ deposition from the vapor state. Similarly, when we talk of physical, when we are not changing the composition at the surface, whatever comes from in the vapor or from the liquid uh, gets deposited onto the surface. So, without any change from the precursor, change between the precursor and the deposit, this can be done through spray coating, through sputtering, through iron plating. And uh, it is uh, one uh, modification of the so called uh, plating processes where we are plating not from uh, liquid state or aqueous uh, solution, but from the vapor state. Um, finally, we can also uh, certainly add on materials by way of electrochemical deposition. So, uh, if you now just go one by one. So, this is, these are the processes which are essentially deposition from the liquid state. So, what we have is here a very well known technique called uh, galvanizing. Now, this uh, galvanizing essentially um, is um, uh, it can be for example, hot dip coating or it can be lacquering or it can be painting. Um, this one uh, part which actually uh, I will add on to the slide is which is missing here is the so called overlays or the weld overlays including cladding. So, you actually can add on to much thicker layers onto the surface by way of this kind of uh, add on uh, or deposition processes where you can add on thick coatings. Uh, 
you can do uh, in the solid state you can have roll bonding you can have pack rolling you can have diffusion bonding wherein actually in roll bonding you actually uh, allow two uh, separate layers to be rolled together uh, mostly in the cold rolling condition and uh, the two layers or the two thin um, uh, sheets can diffuse and bond with each other and then in the process you actually cover one layer one sheet with another which is thinner and uh, that is how you can protect the thicker one. So, you can do either by similar roll bonding or pack rolling you can also do diffusion bonding where the two layers can actually uh, bond with each other through thermally activated diffusional process. You can do uh, for example, now these were the chemical changes. So, essentially we were able to uh, change. Uh, so, first one what we saw was through the liquid or molten bath, the second one is solid state and then now we can also do such chemical changes onto the surface by way of depositing from the vapor state. And this could be chemical vapor deposition, this could be electrochemical vapor deposition or it can be simply physical vapor deposition. The differences being of course, that in CVD you are, uh, there is a difference between the composition that you develop onto the surface, because uh, the deposition also uh, includes certain limited level of uh, reaction happening either in the vapor state or after arriving onto the surface, mostly at the vapor state itself. So, what you deposit is uh, composition wise slightly different than the precursor. Uh, the same thing can happen in electrochemical vapor deposition, but in physical vapor deposition you there is no change in composition from the precursor onto the surface what you deposit. So, this is how you actually all these processes of 9, 10, 11 are processes where you are uh, actually uh, changing adding on to the materials by changing the composition of the surface. You can also uh, create uh, uh, another uh, you can create uh, an, a new surface or, or a add on material by way of um, uh, spray coating, but here you do not necessarily change the composition onto the surface. Say for example, uh, you can use plasma spray or plasma deposition, you can use thermal spray, you can use high velocity spray and these are slightly different than most of the techniques we have discussed so far. In so called high velocity spray, the spray velocity of the particles uh, that are impinging onto the surface can be uh, close to supersonic or maybe even greater than supersonic speed. So, speed wise this actually would be uh, only second to the unimplantation speed. Otherwise, all other processes that we have discussed so far, all other spray or the deposition processes, they are fairly low velocity processes. Uh, we can also have a situation where we have this sputtering or uh, we can have reactive plating, uh, we can have iron plating. Now, in sputtering and reactive plating, uh, uh, we actually are talking about change which is only physical in nature. Similarly, we can have this iron plating deposition processes or plasma uh, electrolytic oxidation processes. So, we are changing the composition here and through uh, a certain chemical reaction which uh, essentially converts certain species onto the surface into its oxide layer. Now, um, we uh, finally, we can also think of uh, electrochemical processes where we actually are depositing uh, the material or the plating the material. We can do electro co deposition where we can actually uh, deposit uh, multiple cations onto the same surface having uh, different uh, uh, anodes, but a single cathode. Uh, we can also uh, coat materials by way of electroless deposition or plating electroless plating processes. So, overall uh, let me go back to the, uh, the main slide and this is how we actually can summarize the entire process uh, of uh, surface engineering, the entire approach of surface engineering as I said in the beginning by these kind of various processes. So, um, again I must uh, emphasize that uh, whenever we talk of one of these for example, electrochemical or a chemical process under each of these approaches there are multiple, uh, uh, multiple techniques possible. And uh, with this summary slide we should be able to uh, take a bird's eye view uh, 
and in one snapshot capture all possible approaches for the so-called surface engineering of engineering solids. Thank you very much.